Let's go into our interview, our first interview for today. So Julius Slade is an 18-year-old matric student from Pinelands High who has started a market by the name Local Asur Lekker, or Local Is So Lekker, to uplift small businesses in Pinelands for the southern suburbs community. During the course of the three months of hosting the market, she accumulated 500 vendors of whom were often um, the sole breadwinners in their family. Family, in their family. Julia said that she will be relaunching the market local Asurlega, um, hosting it this year in December at Pinehurst Primary School on the 18th and the 19th of December. And she is here to tell us all about the passion behind this and how vendors can register for the following market happening in December on the 18th and the 19th. Um, good afternoon, Julia. How are you doing? Hi there, thank you so much for having me. I'm great today. I'm great as well. So how's your day been so far? It's been a really good day. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so honoured that you guys um, decided to do an interview with me. I'm just so grateful for everything that everyone has been putting into this market and all the coverage that it has been getting. That's amazing, that's great. And it's only a pleasure to have you on the show today. So um, without uh, wasting any time, we can get into the interview. So we just like you to briefly give us a, uh, an introduction of who you are, where you grew up, yeah, and how you grew up, and before, yeah, yeah, and how you grew up. So um, I'm Julia Slade. I am 18 years old, and I am a Pinelands High School student. The venue of my market is Pinehurst Primary, which was also my primary school that I went to. I was raised by my great grand, great uncle, and great aunt, who have really been my su- support system my whole life. When I was about five years old, I, I watched my uncle, who is an entrepreneur himself. He is a public speaker, trainer, and coach, and I saw how he was making jobs for himself in the 2009 crash, economic crash, and. I just kind of took after him and when I was about five years old I started doing things like cards which then progressed into bigger business ideas and then last year I saw the devastating effects of the pandemic and I asked myself how can I make a difference because as much as I wanted to take my money and kind of support all the small businesses that I knew I knew that that wouldn't make a big enough impact so I decided to host a market to give a platform because that's how I started out I started selling to my community and I thought that if I had the drive and initiative and the ambition to make a market, I wanted to kind of give back and make a platform to those who may not know where to start. I mean, I get a lot of emails from people that want to apply but have no idea where to start. They don't know what they need. They don't know how it works. And I wanted to be that person and kind of be a role model to young people to show that we can't just go to university, get our degrees and go try to find jobs. That's just not how it works anymore. We need to go out, make make incomes for ourselves and our families and our communities because that's the only sustainable way to do business. And and, and I do agree with you and I wanted to ask you um, what why did you find this so important to start um, the market and you did cover that. Um, partly of I mean partly of it was for you to help small businesses uplift um, their businesses and most of these people were breadwinners and you felt like that would be a, a, a vessel for sustainability in the in their households and I, I like what you mentioned when you said that um, we shouldn't just focus on going to school and getting that degree and um, feeling that okay I've done enough I think I've done enough um, we should also be encouraged to start our smaller businesses so um when when we look at you, you're still in matric and a lot of people would just think, okay, no, I just want to focus on my studies and that's it. Um, how can you encourage someone out there that has an idea of starting a business, but they just don't know or have the mechanisms to put that in place? I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm a little bit of a control freak and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. When I get a bee in my bonnet about something, I will research it to the depths of time. Um, so for example, when I was starting my market, you, you have to think about everything as a process. Nothing just happens overnight. You have to think about the costs involved, the labor that's needed, the advertising. You need to kind of think as it less of like a linear scale on how to do business, but more of like a mind map of everything that kind of fits into it. So if you wanted to start a business selling like skincare, for example, that's what I did. You need to figure out the costs of your raw materials, your packaging, and 
and you also need to tr- uh, you also need to price it in such a way that you are giving yourself a livable wage. I mean, something that I really pride myself on is I don't agree with minimum wage. I don't think that 23 rand an hour is something that anybody can live on. So whenever ha- I have people working for me, I don't care if you're sweeping the streets or if you're greeting customers or if you're helping, I will not be paying 23 rand an hour. It is just not something that I believe in. So I think that you need to find what makes your product different from the rest because as we know, the market is oversaturated. And if you can find that thing that makes yours different, I think that will go a really far way. But in saying that, it comes with a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights. I mean, a lot of people come to me on the days of the market and they're like, oh my goodness, like this is so amazing. Like you did so well. Meanwhile, they didn't see me like three days ago, like having a mental breakdown over an email that just like twigged me the wrong way. So I would say definitely do your research, but don't get intimidated by everything that comes with it because with with great sacrifice comes great reward. Yes, I do agree with that. And you mentioned that um, when you want to start a business, do look at what uh, makes your business, your product, your service stand out from what is already existing. And now applying that to your market, your business, how different would you say, um, local is like, and, um, how would you also say that it has helped your, your community in terms of, um, say sustainability or even contributing to the local economy? I think that a lot of markets that are in the Western Cape are very much catered towards the international market. You see a lot of these like artisans that have markets in really like upmarket, like town like areas and they charge like for one piece can be like minimum 200 rand, like whatever they're selling. Um, but I wanted to start a market where people could come that already needed things that already needed like gift ideas and come get it at like at an affordable price and to also support their local community because a lot of people that sell at uh, my markets are not that expensive compared to like if you go to the shops or if you go to these big upmarket events. So if you look at a lot of the markets that are in Cape Town, like you can pay upwards of like four, five, six hundred rand just for one day for this like tiny, tiny space to um, to sell your goods. So for me, what makes us a bit different is not only are we on an open field, so we are COVID compliant, it is only 200 rand per day to come sell and you get a five by five meter space on a field where you can put at least two or three trestle tables and you can sell whatever you have to do. So I think that's what makes us a bit different is that we're accessible to almost everyone at this point um, um, comparatively speaking to the other markets um, so uh, you have you've hosted 500 um, vendors at your market can you just break it down to us what happens to the market what is the process of registering or applying or and just what happens at the market for people that want to come and support as well yeah, so the first ever market that I did, we had a very small venue, so we only had about 50 vendors. Um, and then I moved to a, a place in Milneton. We didn't quite like that venue. And then we moved to Pinehurst, which was my primary school. And it's a, it's a big, nice field. We can have about 120 vendors. And we still have about a third of our vendor space is still available. So what a vendor can do is they can email me, um, local is so lack of market at gmail.com. And basically what they do is they'll fill out a Google form where we ask information like what you're selling photos of your products um, every like social media handles things like that and then once we collect those responses and we see that there isn't a duplicate stall or you fit all of our requirements you have said yes to the terms and conditions then we will send you an email back with our banking details and then I send out weekly communications um, from starting from the end of October and we basically just walk through the process of what you do when you get there on the day what you need to bring with you. I mean, I know a lot of markets that just kind of throw you in the deep end. They make you sign T's and C's, pay 500 rand and that's it. But I try to make it as accessible to everyone possible and I send them step by step what should you have with you on the day? What is permitted? What isn't permitted? Um, and at this point, yeah, it's around Christmas time so we are focusing more towards like gifty items but we do have a bunch of food stores booked up. Um, we're hoping to have a little bit of music as well and we have a handful of charities also coming. So yeah, yeah, it's it's like that. And how long does the the process take in terms of picking and finding who 
or rather, let me not say picking and finding, because now it's going to sound like you piece, pick and choose. But how long does the process um, take in terms of finding your vendors and getting back to them when you've uh, approved their applications? Um, so at the moment I am studying, so I keep um, an allocated time. So usually I will get back to everyone between times of like 8 o'clock in the morning to 12 and then after about 6 o'clock in the evening. It's generally the same day. I'll send you an email back and if you've applied and there's some sort of issue with your application or I have further questions to ask, you will have something in your inbox that day. So if someone emails me right now, chances are by the time I get home, I will be replying to you. So, so let's talk about um, school. I mean, you have this going, you have your, your, your market going on on the other side, which I believe you're not fully um, invested at the moment because of studies. But how are you balancing the two? I mean, I would like to, to get some tips from you. Um, yeah, it's, it's really been a big struggle. So at the beginning of 2021, I knew that I had to focus a lot of my time onto my matric and, you know, just getting everything, you know, done and ready to go. Um, and then in September time, I knew that because my last exam is on the 1st of December. Um, and so I knew that if I wanted to do a market and stuff, I would have to finalize everything in October in October and a little bit of November because for most of November I'm just going to be writing um, so that's how I did I, I plan everything very much thoroughly to the T and that's why I started applications so early because if by the end of this month I can have all 120 vendors like I will be very very happy um, but in terms of in terms of my schoolwork, it's just having like a really good support system I mean one of the things I really struggle with is pure maths and I'm sure if there's any matrix listening they will 100% agree with me but I have an amazing tutor, Richard, and he's there for me every step of the way. And um, the rest of my stu- subjects, I mean, I average on about a 75% roughly for my school works. I mean, I'm by no means a star student or the best student that there is, but I try my best where I can. And um, I often put a lot, of, a lot of extra work into things that I actually enjoy. I enjoy tourism. I take that as my subject, as one of my subjects, and I enjoy English. So at this very moment in time, I'm just preparing for that maths exam on the 5th of November. Um, but for me, it's it's just prioritizing. It's just um, finding people to support you, finding people to keep you accountable and just prioritizing of what you want the end goal to be. Because I, I think a lot of people will start plans and think, OK, I'm here now. And what do I need to do to get there? But something that my uncle Andre always says is you need to start with the with the end goal in mind. Yes, I do agree with that. Start with the end goal in mind. And I will definitely take some of those tips. You said we should prioritize and make sure that we plan. Because I think planning is very important, irrespective of what you want to achieve. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, like you said, have the end goal in mind. And for you to have the end goal in mind, you have to have a plan for it. So if you're listening out there and you have an idea or you're just um, trying to plan for your matric exams, um, have the end goal, know what you're trying to achieve at the end of the year, plan for it and get your support system. Like you said, you have a great support system that's helping you do everything that you do. But you mentioned also that you, you took a break and you, um, from, from your studies, um, obviously because you're in matric and you say that, um, you will be relaunching the market in December. So can we just go through the registration process for any businesses that are interested in applying and just share some of the requirements if there are any? requirements yeah of course so um, basically there's the only requirements we really have is if you're selling food you need to have a certificate of acceptability um, which you can get from the city of Cape Town I believe it takes two to three weeks to get so if you really want to sell but you don't have a certificate you can apply and then just send me your certificate once you have it Um, other than that we pretty much take anything that's legal at this point Um, charities are also welcome to apply Um, we have had a few charities apply so we would love to see them there as well Um, but do take into consideration it's the December period and um, that a lot of people are looking for gifts they're looking for things to give other people but yeah at this point there's not really anything that um, is a strict requirement as long as you pay your fees in time like that's that's it if people want to find us and you didn't remember the email from earlier we are local so like a market um, that can be found on Facebook or on Instagram you can send me a direct message on either of those or you can just email me local so like a market at gmail.com 
and then I will send them li- the link with the forms and yeah and I should be in touch via email that's our main mode of communication at this point is just email okay you heard it guys you can um, contact uh, send a direct message on their Instagram or their Facebook page local is so lacquer or you can also send them an email um, on this email address which says local is so lacquer at gmail.com so for 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 people that want to go and have fun at the event can you share details of what they can expect at the market yes definitely okay so we don't have everything finalized as now so everything is a little bit subject to change but we have some amazing food coming we have your traditional cape you know samosa spring rolls stuff like that we have a food truck coming if you want to get coffee out of a a buggy a buggy car then we've got that too Um, if you're looking to adopt a pet we are going to be having um, an adoption day Um, we're just waiting for some finalization details from the organization but we should have some pets there Um, there's everything from jewelry to plants to um, just a bunch of things that people are selling thrifted clothes if that's what you're interested in a lot of people making handmade goods if you're someone who likes preserves like jams acne asha i mean acha not acne um anything like that then that will definitely be there as well if you go to our market there is definitely something for everyone and we are also kind of doing it a bit differently this year last time it wasn't very much aimed at kids but we have at least two stalls now doing face paints Um, animal balloons we have some kiddies games that are going to be there so if you have some kids I would say under the age of about 13 and you're just looking for a day out then definitely come bring them Um, all COVID regulations will be in place our stalls are socially distanced and we will have someone sanitizing at the gates as well Um, so yeah it's a family fun event where everyone can find something that will interest them definitely i do think this is interesting i mean food trucks um adopting of pets you have jewelry you have thrift of clothes um plants you have handmade goods i think there's a lot you actually don't have an excuse for not wanting to go to this event so let's just share those details one more give us the dates and location okay great so it's going to be a weekend event 18 and 19th of december vendors if you only want to trade on one day that is perfectly okay if you want to get a hold of me you can do it on instagram or facebook local is so lacquer market um, on Instagram and Facebook and if you want to send me an email local is so, local is so lacquer market at gmail.com and I will get to you back to you as soon as possible it's 200 rand per day and basically anything that's legal can be sold unless we have duplicates and we would love to see you guys there and how can people pur- do p- people purchase tickets or do they play, pay upon arrival? Um, the event is completely free when there's no entrance fee you can just pitch up be sanitized by our people at the gate and then enjoy your day. Masks, of course, are mandatory unless the president change the, changes that, but I don't foresee that happening. So just have a mask that covers your nose and your mouth unless you are eating or drinking something, and we will sanitize your hands at the gate. Definitely. Thank you very much, Julia. L- um, local is definitely so lacquer. Um, expect this on the 18th and the 19th of December this year. Before I let you go, Julia, thank you very much for coming into studio today. Um, do you have any additional words that you'd like to share in closing? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that's listening. My best friend Amy is listening. My dad Andre is in the car. He's listening. My mom and aunt at home are listening. And I want to say thank you to all of you for being my support system and for believing in me and everything that I could do because I wouldn't be here sitting doing a radio interview without you. So thank you to everyone. And just remember, local is so lacquer. Definitely. Thank you very much, Julia. Local is definitely lacquer. Um, if you are interested as a vendor, please do send a direct message to local is so like a Facebook page uh, and Instagram page or you can also send them an email on local lacquer market at gmail.com we just spoke to Julia Slade a matric student who started a market to help uplift small businesses in the Pine Lands um, southern suburbs community and right now taking us to the head, um, the half past one headlines is the sounds by Casper Vest and Major League Utando Loako.